We are Mike and Jeannie, and we restore old houses. In 2021, we moved to South Carolina and bought a 120-year-old Victorian house. Follow along as we put the polish back on this Victorian masterpiece. Today's program is sponsored by the generous support of our patrons. Your support helps to further our historic preservation efforts. For more information, visit patreon.com forward slash 1834 Restoration House. Welcome back to 1834 Restoration House, where we restore old houses. About one year ago, we bought this beautiful old Victorian house. It was 120 years old, and it had been in the same family for all of those years. And so we're essentially the second owners in 120 years. Now that, something to think about for a second. <laughs> yes. So if you're joining us for the first time, we've been doing a series on some restoration work out front here. Previously, this was covered in old, worn out bushes. I mean, they were just really ratty looking. We pulled them out, we started digging down, and we found that there was a brick water catchment feature right back here behind me. It was originally intended to catch the water, bring it sideways, around the corner, and out back, and then into a pipe system to get rid of it. Well, that had been buried under a foot of soil all these years. Nobody even knew it was there. We found it. We have to restore it, right? We tore everything out except the brick catchment. We left that in place. So we're digging around in here and we kept finding bricks right here in front of the catchment. And we pulled them out. And then right about here, we start finding more bricks that were just buried in the soil. And we started digging them out. Well, that was an old planter box that had been built years ago. And over the years had basically broken up and gotten buried. Well, we have to rebuild that too, right? So we tore all of that out except for the catchment and we've laid a foundation here, uh, a little stripe of concrete or two, and we're currently cleaning this out so that we can continue that. After several days of intense heat and high humidity, we woke up this morning, it was cool, it was fresh, and it was dry. So we're taking full advantage of it. This is the last one here. Look at the size of that root ball. It is massive. And so what I did is I dug around it and put the chain down underneath the roots. I think there may be a few others underneath there and I'm not exactly sure what we're dealing with. But anyway, I've got the chain choke set and tied off to the tractor. So let's see what happens. If anybody wonders whether a tractor is very useful or not, that's a great example right there. I just feel like I landed a big fish here. This is incredible. So go ahead and release this. Maybe. Look at the size of that root ball. As far as I can tell, this thing is just a weed. But look at the size of that thing. That's incredible. Well, we're glad to have it out. A couple of days ago, our mailman comes walking up and he says, y'all have some kind of a YouTube thing going on there? And we said, yeah, yeah. And we told him about 1834 Restoration House. So maybe he'll be watching this from now on. If you are, hey, good to see you. All right, over here is the water catchment, which poured into the catch basin. And the catch basin in turn went to an iron pipe. And we thought that iron pipe probably went 
across the yard out to the back, but on further inspection, we found that it stops right there. So we don't know if somebody cut it. We don't know if that was originally where it stopped. We just don't know. But what we do know is this catch basin here is supposed to be empty and not full of dirt. So I'm gonna get in here and do some digging. It's really amazing when you start digging around a house that's 120 years old. You just never know what you're gonna find. But finding a Victorian drainage system is still intact. It's pretty amazing. I mean, you just don't find this kind of stuff on modern houses. Uh, yeah, it does need some repairs, but wow. I think with a little extra work here, we can make this a really nice working system again. Now, I am finding some things in here. I can't quite see what they are yet, but there's something solid right here. It comes up and kind of, I don't know, it, it, and then there's something else here. What is, oh, that's a piece of an old brick. Toss that out. We got to meet some of our neighbors a few houses down today. That was really nice. Okay, I'm finding a root system here. Oh wow, look at that. This thing's been allowed to run free for a long time. And it's probably not going to take too kindly to me disturbing it. This one here, this is part of that massive root system we just dug out of here. It came all the way over here, uh, knocked a few bricks out of the catchment and we'll have to uh, re-cement those in place. Um, and then it comes down into here, so I don't know what kind of no good it's up to, but we're gonna find out. Okay, the solid object just moved. This is an old-fashioned Victorian, I'm gonna call that a clay pipe, used for drainage way back in the day. It's, it's the same thing as this, as clay pipe. And somebody just tossed it in there. I'm tossing it right back out. Here's the catch basin all cleaned out. That yellow crusty stuff down there, that's actually ant killer. Because I found out as I was digging down there, that entire thing was completely full of ants and ant eggs. Of course, that triggers a uh, defensive response and so they started coming after me and I got a couple of bites, it wasn't bad. But they're still down there, and I gave them plenty to eat. Also, if you take a look over here, this is the four cubic feet of soil that I pulled out of there, and it is absolutely filled with ants and ant eggs. So I went ahead and left a nice meal on top there, so when they get hungry, they can just come up and uh, get something to eat. I dug the pipe out just a little bit so you can see what it looks like. It appears to me that the soil must have risen over 120 years since this thing was built because that probably was on the ground or close to it when it was originally put together. Part of this catchment has been under soil for a while, not, not nearly as much as it was on the other side, but it's still enough. So I'm going to go ahead and just unearth it taking all the grass and throwing it into piles so that it doesn't try to regrow again. Oh, we've got some roots. That's not good.
It's a new day here at the Victorian. We were up at the crack of dawn because we want to get as much work done as we can before the heat of the day comes. Now, the work we're doing today is the geotechnic work. That's the hard stuff, the intellectual stuff, but it has to be right in order for the brickwork to turn out right. So we have two parallel lines which go along where the bricks will go. But now think with me for a second. So I've got two lines of bricks and I've got two guide strings. And so the bricks are going to come along like this. And then all of a sudden they turn the corner like this. And our strings have to go with them. And the way that we had our strings set up initially, that wouldn't work because there would be a crossing between the bricks and the strings, and we can't have that. So what we did is we moved the strings to the outside edges of the curve. So now we have two lines of bricks that go like that, and our guide strings are able to pass, pass that and then go that way as well. That way there's no crossing between the brick and the string. Look at this crazy intersection here. So you've got two stakes here, two strings here, and they cross over. That's intentional because where these two strings cross, that represents the intersection of where the brick turns the corner. And so our brick will just follow that string. And then we have the same thing here going on. Our brick work will come, it'll turn the corner and go that way. Because we've done all the stake work here, all of our calibration marks have moved up and down, and so everything is out of calibration. Now we do have one stake over there that hasn't moved, and a little while ago, we took the laser system and we recalibrated the laser to the stake, and so now the stake is accurate. And we're gonna go ahead and recheck every single one of these stakes and reestablish the level with the laser system. Keep going down. That doesn't feel right. No, go back up. Okay, go up. Right there. Okay. Perfect. You really had a mark there. I did? Yes. You mean we nailed it? We nailed it. Oh, how about that? <laughs> I put another mark anyway, just to make sure. Which side does this line need to be on? That side or this side? Um, it needs to be on the... On this side? I've just been doing everything on the back side. Okay. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Our stake is a little bit crooked, but that's okay. And one more over here. Right there. Okay. Okay. I'm not getting a reading for some reason. There. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Yep. I have enough high up. Hold on. Right there. Right there. We got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> All right. So our stake is too short. How do you fix that? Simple. Two screws and a stake. Right there. Now we have a laser calibrated line on every single one of these stakes that is known to be absolutely level. From there on out, we don't need the laser. All we have to do is take the tape measure and measure down as far as we need to go and do that on every single stake and that'll guarantee everything is perfect. Oh yeah.
this looks beautiful. Thank you. So you've got the flower bed base done. What are you doing here with this part? Well, like I said, the, the planter stops there. But since we have the water catchment that's still going that way, uh -huh. the water catch basin is right behind me, I wanted to continue funneling that water that way and not just have it kick out over here into the soil. Um, Ooh. The idea is to get the water away from the house. Right. So what I was doing here is just making a foundation so I could add a short brick wall here and that will continue the tunnel effect that we have going back here. I love it. Yeah, and then I love it. Once we get that done, we can address this and figure out what to do with the water once it gets there. <laughs> yes, we still need to do that. Yeah. Well, beautiful. Well, we didn't get a lot of filming done today just because I was busy and it was really hot. So we woke up this morning, came out here. It was absolutely miserable. The humidity was really high. I mean, it almost looked like there was fog in the air. It was hot. It was hard to breathe. And then I started working. And about an hour later, all of a sudden the wind picked up, the sky turned blue, and you could actually feel the air drying out. It was amazing. So the humidity is dropping as we go along, but anyhow, enough of the weather. So I managed to get these two done all the way down here. And this is the end of the planter. And then the catchment wall continues this way, follows the catchment all the way down to here into the catch basin. And there was a little bit of a problem here where things had sunk over the years. And so I went ahead and added some concrete there just to bring it back up to level again. So we're done for now. We're gonna let this dry overnight and we'll come back and start laying bricks. It's a new day here at the Old Victorian. We came out here at first light to get started. And right away I discovered that that stake there was miscalibrated. So I went ahead and recalibrated that stake, checked everything else, everything else is fine. So then we went ahead and we raised our strings up and started laying some bricks. Now, if you remember the last side over there, it didn't go very well because we didn't have the laser level and we could never figure out where level was. And so we did a lot of guessing and it just caused all kinds of problems. With this one here, we were very, very careful with our geotechnic work to make sure that everything was level, straight, and perfect. These bricks right here are within half a bubble on the level as I measured it. So right away, we're having a much better result having done all the geotechnic work ahead of time. So we're gonna grab another bag, get it mixed up, and keep on going. Well, it's late in the afternoon, it's getting hot, and it's time to quit because I'm working in the sun and that's not good in the heat of summer. But we did manage to get a lot done. We got the first row of bricks done all the way down here. We hit the corner, headed down that way, and just about hit the end of the planter. So tomorrow morning, bright and early, I'll come back out. I'll go around the corner of the planter there and then I'll carry on because I want to take this and continue it on all the way down here to the water catch basin. So that's the plan for tomorrow. We're going to spend the rest of the day inside with air conditioning and try to cool off. So we will see you in a couple of minutes. Another southern storm. Check this out. Our catchment is working really well. You can see all the water going down. It's staying in there. That's really nice. And then come look over here at the catchment down here. It's filling up and the water pushed through the pipe and it's coming down and around. It's going by the house down over here and it's going down the side of the house back there. This is looking a lot better. On the other side, we didn't have a good reference. So our brickwork tended to do like this and we were constantly chasing that level line. Our next door neighbor loaned us a laser 
And on this side, we were very careful about making sure that we knew exactly where our elevations were. And then we compensated for that by digging down until everything was level according to the laser line. And it made a tremendous difference. So I'm on the second layer of bricks right here. Everything is right dead on. And that's wonderful. Let me show you a couple of things that we've done. I've started the second layer of bricks here and I'm headed that direction. Now, when I'm laying the bricks, they always need to stagger 50%. And because of that, that means that I have to start my second course on the same end that I started my first course. In other words, I can't go this way and then turn around and come back this way. That doesn't work. So I have to start here, go that way, come back over here, start my second course and head that direction. So it's just a little thing to make sure that your bricks are perfectly overlapped by 50%. Now, we managed to get the first layer of bricks here and our stakes that set the elevation with the strings, those are working pretty well. We just raise them all up together between each course and that gives me a line that I can refer to. And then we come around this way the planter box ends right here but we continue this wall right here it's just a single layer wall and that builds up our catchment and builds up a channel so that the water can roll in that video that we shot showing the rainstorm you could actually see the water going down through that and that was pretty cool because it actually is working the way it's designed to so let's bring the camera over here and show you a better close-up this is our catch basin over here. And as I'm building up this brick wall, I'm also building up the ends of the basin as well, because the basin used to stop here, but that's one brick high, and I really don't think that's good enough on it for a couple of reasons. If there's a ton of water coming through here, I wanna make sure that it doesn't spill out over that way. And if our wall is up here, but our basin is down here, the water is just gonna blow out sideways. Um, second reason is, if somebody's walking through the yard, not paying attention, I don't want them to trip on this really low catch basin and then fall into this. That's not good. So I'm raising this up. I managed to find some old bricks back there that were the same size as these because these bricks are actually slightly larger than the new bricks. So using the old bricks, I was able to build this back up and raise it. And I'll probably go up another layer or two and I think it's gonna look great. The filming of this episode has taken place over several days because it is so hot that we work for a couple hours and we're just absolutely wiped out and can't go any further. And so it's just taking so long. But this morning I woke up and I checked the weather. To my surprise, it was 57 degrees outside. Wow, it hasn't been like that in a long time. So I came out here this morning. Have you ever gone camping in the mountains? And you wake up in the morning and you get outside the tent and it's just brisk and so refreshing. And then the day warms up and everything goes back to being warm again. Well, that's what it feels like today. It is so nice out here right now. So we're gonna take advantage of some brickwork time. But first, I'd like to take a moment to show you what we've done. We have two layers of brick all the way down here. We've turned the corner. Now look at this feature right here. See how they stagger them like that? Well, I'm attempting to do the same thing here, just to mimic that look. Remember, we want this to look exactly like the foundation. And then, we managed to get down to here and ran out of mortar, so I wasn't able to quite finish that. And this back here is still a single layer of brick. One of the issues we're having is that a batch of mortar will go so far. And what I want to make sure doesn't happen is that we get down here and we end up with a bunch of mortar left over because we're not ready to lay bricks over here until we reset all the strings. And that takes time to do that because it's very precise. They all have to be raised by a certain amount and measured very carefully and the mortar will just sit there and go off and go stiff. So we have to be very careful with our timing on this. So what I've been doing is I've been allowing this to just sit and we'll keep building this up. And eventually we'll get back over here and finish this.
It's time to start laying bricks back on this end and heading that direction again. That'll be our third course. Now, if you remember, we set the laser line and we marked every single one of these stakes with the laser line. And that way we know that every stake has a reference point that's level and true. Our last course is set at 14 inches from the laser line down. So the top of the brick to the laser line is 14 inches. Now we decided early on that two and a half is going to be the thickness of one course. So we'll take 14, we'll subtract two and a half from that, and what do we get? 11 and a half. 11 and a half. So what we'll do is we'll measure 11 and a half inches down from our line, and that's where I'm going to move this screw, and that'll raise the string up. You can't see the line on camera here, but Jeannie is looking. And so she has 11 and a half inches just about dialed in there. There we are. Okay, I'm gonna loosen the screw. This is now raised up to the new level. So we'll do that same thing to every single one of these stakes. Now I'm moving the screw up to where the tape measure says I need to go. Okay, that's good. Okay, this is a special condition here because we have string crossings. And if you try to adjust things, your strings could do this kind of thing and we don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is pick the string that's on top, which is this one, and we'll do that one first. Okay, that works. Next one. Some of these big box screws don't work very well. Now that we have the top string moved, we can go ahead and move the lower one. I can tell right now that's going to pop. It's under piano wire tension. Okay, that that's fine now. No good. No good. <sighs> yeah, some of these screws are really lousy. Most of them are lousy. Yeah, most of them are lousy. It's the good old days when you could go down to your local home center and get good screws and nails. Yes. Okay, was I was I in this hole? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. Okay. Okay, it's in. Now, if you look down here, you'll see that there's a little bit of upward tension on this. And the reason is because we haven't raised that end down there yet. So once we raise that up, then everything should be right perfect. After we turn the corner, the planter is allowed to go downhill, and so is the extension, which means we can't use the laser line as a reference. So what we do is we put our tape measure here and then I lift the string up until that tape measure intersects right here at two and a half.
Okay, that's perfect. Sometimes you gotta get down in the dirt <laughs> when you're doing restoration. Okay, there's two and a half between jiggles. Okay, I think we're good. Let's double check that one more time. Yes. Okay, two and a half. Here we are at the catch basin. And what I'm doing is I'm raising it up because I'm afraid that somebody might trip over it or fall into it. So I'm raising it up high enough that it becomes a visual barrier and people will know that it's there. And I'm using old bricks for this. That's, that's really cool. So these are historic bricks. They've been laying around the property for some time, probably decades, if not maybe more than decades. And they're very dirty. So before I lay them, I have to go along with the brush here and just get as much of the dirt off as I can. That way the mortar will stick. These modern bricks are made in molds in factories, and they're very consistent. These old bricks, on the other hand, not so much. They're all kind of irregularly shaped. That has a nice vintage look to it. Now, as I mentioned, the bricks are so irregular, they're not all exactly the same size. And so I'm trying to make it a priority that the outside of the brick wall is flat and smooth, and then just let the inside do what the inside's gonna do. All right, let's get to it.
Okay, that's going to take a little. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't stick very well. So anyway, now that everything's falling off of here. Let's see. That does not want to stay on. All right, let's see if I can get that on real quick before it falls off again. Okay. Okay, all of the bricks are on. I'm going to just go ahead and just kind of tap them in position. Take off some of that excess mortar. And get things kind of in line with where they're supposed to be. All right, that looks pretty good. It's really challenging working with this old stuff. Well, it just takes a lot of finesse, you know? Make sure the joints are well stuffed. Make sure they're finished smooth. Now later on we come back with a tool and we just try to clean this up a little bit. But it's good to make sure that all the joints are full. Alright, well you kind of get the gist of it, so um, we'll go ahead and, and just finish this up. But, I think we have a film here for an entire episode. And it's lunchtime. I'm hungry. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. We'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching 1834 Restoration House. If you like what you see, please subscribe and we'll see you later.